Welcome back to the virtual hanger. Today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute button Harry Potter wall art. Your kit will include one 5x7 art easel, one paintbrush, we're using a flat paintbrush this time for a bigger area, one little container of yellow acrylic paint, this is probably way more paint than you'll need, one little baggie of assorted size yellow buttons, one sewing needle, one bobbin of yellow sewing thread. From home, you'll need a Sharpie, a pair of scissors, and maybe a pencil. For the first step, we are just going to draw our shape that we're gonna make uh, our buttons. We're gonna try and stay within the confines of the wood on the back side because we have to be able to sew through onto this shape. So you don't wanna go over onto the wood. So I'm just gonna use my pencil to lightly make the shape of a lightning bolt. We're doing this in a Harry Potter theme. I don't like that shape very much. I'm gonna use a little movie magic, <laughs> clean it up a little bit better, that's fine. Once you've got your shape drawn, um, we're just gonna take our paintbrush and our yellow paint and just do a thin layer to color in the background of our shape. This will give the final piece a little bit more defined shape um, because as you know, buttons are usually round and if we didn't make these sharp edges, it would just kind of look like a lumpy sort of lightning bolt, which is not the best. So I'm just doing a nice thin coat of acrylic paint all the way um, to fill in my entire shape. You can see the pencil line kind of shown, like shows through. I don't really care about that that much on mine aesthetically. If you were really bothered by it, you could draw your shape and then erase it lightly so that you could just barely see the pencil. Or you could do a couple coats of the yellow background, but I think once the button gets on there, you're not really going to notice the pencil, so I just wasn't worried about it. Um, I just did one thin coat of the yellow acrylic paint. Step two, we are going to thread our needle. I think I cut a piece here that was about three feet in length. Of course, that doesn't really matter because if you run out of thread, you just start a new one, tie a new knot. Um, and here is how I always thread my needles. We're gonna take our sewing needle and hold the needle in your non-dominant hand and bring the tip of the thread through the eye of the needle. Then we're just gonna bring the two ends together and tie them in a simple overhand knot. For this project, you're gonna to wanna to tie a couple of knots every time you do this because the sewing thread is thin enough and the needle is thick enough that you don't wanna accidentally pull the knot through the canvas. So make sure you're tying a bunch of overhand knots. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour out all of my buttons here and just kind of start sewing them. If you've never sewed a button, this is a great project to do to uh, start to learn how to sew a button. It's basically the same process every time. Um, whether the button has two holes or four holes, you're gonna start on the back of the canvas with your needle. Um, I'm gonna start with kind of a big one here on the big area of the button. It doesn't matter what order you sew these in. You'll use less thread if you put your buttons next to each other and got, kind of go systematically. Um, so we're gonna push our needle through the back side of the canvas, through one of the buttonholes. If it has four holes, you're gonna go across to the diagonal to the next hole, not in the hole next to it. You always wanna make kind of a cross stitch when you're sewing on a button with four holes. So we're gonna go across diagonally. Um, I usually kind of loop the string through that first knot in between the two threads um, so that the, again, so that the knot doesn't go through the canvas. You kind of catch it in between. And then we're gonna stick our needle through the back side of the canvas again, um, this time to a hole next to it. So again, we're making kind of a cross stitch shape. And then we're gonna go across diagonally to the other hole. That makes a nice sewn X on the front and our button is nice and secure. If you were fixing your clothes or something, you were using a button that is gonna get used all the time, you would probably wanna do that same cross stitch a few more times in the same button if you were sewing a button onto fabric for like a coat or something. Um, but for this, we're not really expecting these buttons to get a lot of wear and tear, so once is totally fine. So I'm gonna do the same thing here with this smaller button and just go make a cross stitch. Be careful not to get your threads caught on the corner of your canvas. 
I'm just gonna make a nice X in these buttons. And basically that's the whole project. It's a lot of practice for sewing buttons, um, which is if it's not a skill you have already, it's definitely a skill you will have by the end of this project. Um, so I just take the buttons and start laying them out on the shape and fill them out um, as best as I can so that I can just fill in the entire shape with buttons. Again, so Harry Potter is our summer, well, magic, reading is magical, is our summer reading theme. So we did a Harry Potter project for this project, but this same technique with the buttons and the shape, I've seen it applied for all kinds of shapes. You could do it for any kind of wall art. You could do it on a huge easel that you get. Make a big rainbow if you wanted to. Um, all you would need is the buttons in different colors and the paint. You could draw any shape you like and fill it in. And you could even use this kit and make a different yellow shape. We're just doing a lightning bolt. Maybe you want to make it Percy Jackson themed um, and make your yellow lightning bolt and write a quote from Percy Jackson. So we're doing Harry Potter for our summer reading is magical theme, but you totally don't have to. Feel free to use the supplies to get creative and do whatever project you like. Um, so we are just sewing the rest of our buttons in. As you can tell, it's kind of just a little bit like I lay a few out to see how they'll fit. And then, um, you know, they don't fit. So <laughs> I move them and then I put different ones down. Uh, I'm not laying out the whole thing. I'm just trying to fill in the shape as best as I can. You don't want a bunch of dead space. Um, but you also don't really want to go outside the lines of your shape the better you stay within the confines of your painted shape, the better the art will look at the end, right? So I did lay out this couple and then put my extra buttons aside and then I'm just going to sew through the rest of the buttons. I didn't end up running out of thread while I was doing this. If you happen to run out of thread, your thread is just too short, just tie it off in a really good overhand knot and then cut a new thread just like you did at the beginning and start again with a new thread. The nice thing about canvas art is that nobody sees the backside. So you can see here, I'm just gonna kind of tuck the needle under and tie a really secure knot. Doesn't matter what kind of knot it is, as long as it's secure. Again, these aren't buttons that people are gonna fuss with, so they don't have to be like industrial strength. But there are all my buttons sewn in. So the last step is to just take a Sharpie. Um, you could use black paint and a brush. You could use um, that excellent fake brush lettering technique that we learned in our very first quarantine video way, way back in March. But I'm just taking a Sharpie and writing my, you know, favorite short Harry Potter quote. And I'm gonna fill it in a little better because my Sharpie was a little bit dead. And there you have it. That is my final project. As always, I would love to see what you make. If you have any questions, please contact us on social media. And I will see you next time.